Okay, continuing now with our work on integration, and um, we've we're ready for for now calculating volumes of revolution. Um, and so what this is about is is taking um, taking areas that we've been we've been looking at uh, using integration. So we know that now to find say an area between um, yeah my boundary here uh, B and and here zero to find the area under this curve which let's say is a, is a part of y equals x squared uh, to find that exact area our process has been to uh, take a take a small little rectangular strip here where my width is dx and that's just a, a small x uh, dx representing a, a small x and and this limit concept of a infinitely small x and and you know, the more and more of these little rectangles we take the closer we'll get to the to this to this exact area so um finding that area there which is actually if that's a rectangle my width dx and my height is just y or in this case x squared so my area in there my area of, of that little rectangle is is uh, x squared dx now that's just for for that little rectangle there but if we're going to now we're going to find yeah, there's there's another dx width with with another so it's another rectangle now um, it's just a, a little bit higher so it's x squared my value of x is higher so my my function value is higher so what we're doing here is in in order to find this whole area what we want to do is we want to find the sum of between b and zero these these rectangles which are individually x squared dx and and there therein lies my my area using integration to find area now what we're doing here and that's what we have been doing and you know, it's a nice little recap perhaps for you but what we are looking to do now is take take these discs or in fact I mean in, in its totality take this whole area and re revolve it around the x-axis in this case we'll look at we can also go around the y-axis but what happens when you take this area here and sweep it around the x-axis so give it a 360 revolution around the the x-axis is that you will it'll sweep into it'll trace out a three-dimensional space and hence a solid we can find the volume of um, maybe an easier example is to look at say a uh, you know um, a, a straight line a horizontal line between uh, four and zero and take this area here and revolve it around the x-axis so what you'd have is a you might be able to visualize it you'd have a uh, you'd have a cylinder, wouldn't you? Where that, that that would sweep around like that, that would be its face. So this this rectangle would sweep itself around. You'd have a you'd have a cylinder like so, um, and you'd be able to work out the volume of it by finding um, in in conventional in conventional way uh, the area of the the surface, the face uh, times h, which in this case is 4 pi r squared and we just r would be the value of this if this was say 3 here then that would be 4 pi times the radius which is 3 squared is 9 so that would be 36 pi uh, units cubed that would be the volume of of that cylinder which is this rectangle here traced around now the reason I, I, just, I demonstrated this was just to just to have a look at what revolving a two-dimensional space around 360 degrees what it results in it results in a in, in a in a um in a three-dimensional shape now when it's a straight line that's that's revolved or sorry a straight line boundary so a rectangular area um or if you like a polygon is revolved around then we get, we get a recognizable shape so we'll have a look at um how to do that uh we've just worked out the volume using um, what we what we know about cylinders, but we could use um, a technique using integration, which will will come up um, against shortly. Um, so that works um, nicely for, as I said, polygon shapes. But what about when it's curved? You know, we don't now know if this gets revolved around what sort of shape we have. You know, we'll get an unrecognizable kind of um, sort of trumpety looking shape and then we need to find the volume of that so we'll need to look at the technique so um, similarly with with area what happens when we revolve a, a, a little rectangular um, uh, uh, sliver if you like um, a little segment like that what happens when you revolve it around the x-axis so if we have a look at 
just say one little uh, one little rectangle like so let's say take that with width dx um, and you know that's my height there y and what happens when we take it and, and revolve it around the x-axis what sort of shape do we end up with well we'd have a look at maybe this is my little attempt at that shape um, and it would be some kind of some kind of disc wouldn't it where you'd have um, it's not a particularly good drawing but right, that's my that's my width there so it'd be some kind of coin sort of shape so what we'd have is um, each of these little rectangles will result in when revolved around the x-axis one of these little discs now if we find the the volume of just one of those discs then um, what we've got is a circular face which is pi r squared now r in this case our radius is our function value so in this case um, y so we can replace r with y and my uh, height is just the width of that rectangle there which is dx so when we find the volume just as we did for area we will be looking at finding the sum of between two values this pi r squared now ask r is replaceable with with y so be pi y squared dx and this will become our volume formula for finding the volume you can take the pi out the front as we know constants coming out the front makes calculations a little bit easier normally um, and that will become our uh, volume formula for finding the volume of um, solids that result from revolution from taking shapes and revolving them around the x-axis or y-axis by 360 degrees so let's have a look at um, how this how this might work with an example um, and perhaps we can have a look at this example here now we've got the function value here is y equals 3 so we've taken this taken this line y equals 3 and between 4 and 0 so what we've what we've got there if I transfer that down to this section of the page we're, we're between we're evaluating between 4 and 0 a um, uh, between 4 and 0 we're summing all these little discs now these little discs are all um, 3 high so radius is 3 so 9 pi so we're going with 9 pi um, between 9 pi dx between 4 and 0 9 pi coming from pi r pi y squared or pi r squared r being 3 so if we integrate this now 9 pi with respect to x will become 9 pi x and we evaluate between 4 and 0 put 4 in for x we get 36 pi minus put 0 in for x we subtract 0 we get 36 pi units squared now that's a very straightforward units cubed sorry very straightforward example but you can see the result matches the one we got here for just working out using our knowledge of the volume of a cylinder um, but much more useful when we use more useful um, we don't have any other option when we've got a curved boundary um, we could have another look at we could have a look at say um, an example here where we I'll just pause so just have a little uh, look at an example here where we're taking um, the question looks like this find the volume of the solid of revolution formed by rotating the area bound by y equals x squared this is y equals x squared here uh, it's a section of that that parabola x equals 0 and x equals 3 so we're taking this area here and we're revolving it 360 around the x-axis and a, a solid is formed a bit like the one we we uh, were looking at up here um, but our method is to look at a a rectangle with the dx width and rotating it around the the x-axis and having a look at the, the sum of these discs that are formed so if you see a little disc here where that's my width so my height and it's a um, obviously a circle like a coin so what we do to find this volume is we sum between 3 and 0 our, um, um, our, 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 our coin volume and our coin volume is uh, pi r squared h now h is so if we bring it over here my coin volume coin volume or disk volume is pi r squared h 
So we know this is just a, a cylinder with, with H as being this little height here. Now, for us, R is, is Y. It's the value of Y in our function. So we can replace R with Y. And H gets replaced with DX because that's my width there, DX. So I write this over here as pi y squared dx, but I bring the pi out the front, so it's y squared there dx. So um, the integral now will take each of these, it'll, it'll sum all these disks, the infinite number of disks, the limiting value of disks between 3 and 0, so it'll give me this exact volume, um, which is right on the limit. The, the, the exact volume sits right on the limit, and that's, that's the idea of the, the integration concept. So if we evaluate this now, we bring the pi out the front, now y is equal to x squared, so what I'm doing here is x squared squared, so I'm evaluating x to the power of 4 between 3 and 0. So in this case, y equals x squared, so what I've done in there, just for your notes, is that uh, y equals x squared, so therefore y squared is equal to x to the 4. So we're evaluating the integral um, between 3 and 0, so we end up with pi... Uh, 3 goes in there, 3 to the power of 4 is 81, uh, 0 to the power of 4 is 0, so we end up with 81 pi units cubed as our, as our volume of the whole volume here between, if you like, between, uh, between 3 and 0 of, of this, this, this kind of thing that's formed here. Um, uh, this this sort of solid that's formed here. This, um, you know, if you can imagine sweeping that through 360 degrees. Uh, my drawing is not great, but if that's that's that uh, solid that's formed when you when you rotate that through. If you looked at another angle of it, it might be uh, might be something that looks like this. Um, um, and if it's transparent, just through there like that. So it's that kind of cone shaped, but not with straight edges here, with curved edges being the y equals x squared part of that parabola. So the volume of this is my 81 pi units cubed. Okay, um, exercise 9m and 9n is, um, is what we can, we can look at now over the next lesson or two. Exercise 9m and 9n. So I'll see you in class and we'll have a look at those questions.